Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Golan Cafe and today we're going to go through Advent of Coding Go. At least the first day today and uh, we, I'm going to attempt to uh, go through each day as we go along. Advent of Code, for, for who doesn't know what it is, it's, uh, it's uh, a yearly, um, a yearly uh, kind of competition uh, of uh, small programming puzzles for uh, a variety of skill sets and uh, skill levels. So you can read more on the website and adminofcode.com and there will link also in the description below and I will also link the code of today's session as well. So we can just start today by checking the uh, the, the first problem set and obviously today is the 2nd of December so I've already gone through the first two uh, problem sets. Uh, I will try to go to, re to uh, record them as, as we go. Uh, so the first First, uh, the first problem is uh, you will have also a story, a kind of a story, uh, kind of a storytelling uh, thing on theme on the problems. And so it goes: the tropical island is on currency and is entirely cash only. The gold coins used there have a little picture of a starfish. The locals just call them stars. None of the currency exchanges seem to have heard of them, but somehow you will need to find 50 of those coins by the time you arrive, so you can pay uh, you can pay the deposit on your room. Uh, to save your vacation, you need to get all 50 stars by the December 25th. So it's just a, a prelude to the to the puzzle itself, to the old puzzles itself, which runs through each day up to the 25th of January of December. Um, so for each problem, you get uh, you get uh, two stars, and uh, it's because each problem is composed of two sets. So for each set, you get a star, and, I, and at the end of each day, you get two stars if uh, you solve the two sets. And at the end of the 25 days, you get 20, 50 stars. And so it goes the first problem. Uh, before you leave, the elves in accounting just needs you to feed the expense report, the puzzle input, which is uh, what you can see here. Apparently, something isn't quite adding up. Specifically, they need you to find the two entries that sum to 2020 and then multiply those two numbers together. For example, suppose your expense report contained the following and that gives you a list of numbers, of integers, uh, 17, 21, 9, 7, 9, and so on and so forth. In this list, the two entries that sum to 2020 are 17, 21, and, two, and, and 299. Multiplying them together produces 17, 91 uh, multiplied by 299 and it, it gives out the 500,000, 500,779. 579. So the correct answer is uh, 514579. That's what you get as uh, as an example. So it gives you an it gives you an input example, then it gives you uh, a, a problem statement, and then uh, it gives you also the actual output that you are supposed to get from this uh, example here, and then it gives you a input. Um, it gives you a puzzle input, which is uh, what we're going to use for our problem, which is a, a larger larger set. And this is what we're going to use today. I already, obviously, I already solved this, so I'm just going to throw the reasoning and the, pro and the actual uh, implementation of that in Go. Um, so the, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we already have the input value there. So we already have the, if you check the input, uh, we already have the values there, which I downloaded before. Uh, so just gonna create a quickly a file which, which are going to use uh, as a boilerplate uh, where we can execute our uh, we can do our testing and now we can find out our result which is going to be done in go and just going through quickly the problem before uh, what we want to do we want to find a set of numbers that added up together gives us 2020 so 2020 is the final output the set of numbers let's say the two set of numbers x, x and y how do we find out if those two numbers are in the set? Well, first, uh, the first thing that I would do is uh, is uh, is going through the list, and uh, for each of those items, then uh, you would have to. So the the first principle would be basically to try all the combinations, right? So trying all the combination is that you uh, you have a um, you have a um, n by n uh, complexity, you have an n square complexity because you have to try all the combinations uh, of all the entries in your, uh, in, your, um, in your list, obviously, right? So if you go through all of them uh, and then for each of them you, you go again through each item and then you multiply them together and you see if that adds up to 2020, then uh, you are going to find out the result, but that's uh, not very efficient. 
Another way that you could do that, uh, we could do that is by using hash maps. Obviously, hash maps are, uh, are very useful in a lot of different contexts. Uh, and in this context, is uh, it's very handy because the first thing we're going to do, we're going to load the data into the hash map. Then we're going to go through the hash map. And for each item, uh, we are going to um, we are going to subtract 2020. So 2020, we're going to subtract the item that we find in the map. And then we're going to get a result. And then we're going to check if this result is within the map just by using constant time. So in this case, what we can do, we can just uh, iterate through the map linearly and then using constant time to check if the item is in our map. And why that makes sense? It makes sense because if you uh, move, if you take this equation and you move, uh, and you move uh, the, um, and you flip the equation, uh, or rather, like since we have 2020 equals uh, x plus y, and you would like to solve this equation, uh, you want to bring back uh, y to the other side of the equation, let's say, and then you get x as a result. So let's say that we iterate the map, iterate through the I I items of the map, and we assume that uh, each of those items is y. Then we subtract uh, from 2020, we subtract this item, and we get a number x. And then we need to do one last test, which is uh, check if x is in the map again. So if x is in the map, it means that x is already in the map because we iterate through the map, we know that it is in the map. x is also in the map because we accessed it uh, directly, which is uh, our list of numbers. And then the x plus y is equal to 2020. And that will, uh, that will allow us to... Uh, so we first need to first load uh, the list into a map which is uh, which is uh, linear time you need to go scan through the list then once we do that uh, we for each uh, for each item and uh, we call it uh, y uh, in the map uh, we do the following and this is also a linear time so it's uh, it's a linear time as well it's not uh, n squared as we would do if we were doing the recursive the, the double loop inside the list so for each item y in the map, uh, we attempt to calculate 2020 minus y, and then we want to check if x in the map uh, in constant time, so this is one is constant time, uh, if x is in the map, then we already found our pair, then we return x uh, multiplied by y, which is the result of our, uh, our problem set, problem statement. How do we load the list into the, the map? So what we're gonna do today, we are just gonna use uh, IOUtil for loading the file, read file, uh, read file input.txt. Uh, also, we want to check if there is any error. We know that uh, very likely there is not going to be any error in this case because uh, the file is given and the input is given. Uh, then we said that we're gonna need to create a map uh, and the map is gonna, how you create the map, you just use make keyword and then map and then integer because you want to map an integer to an integer. So we map the number to the number of occurrences for that number. And then we just say zero. So then what we're gonna do, we are going to load the data into the map. And uh, we can do that by using uh, bytes.split because uh, data from read file is a byte slice and we can use the utility bytes of split uh, to split the byte slice uh, by bytes uh, pattern. So we just use the new line as a pattern. So it's going to be split by new line and we're going to have uh, a byte slice of uh, byte slices where you have a, a for each line, you have all lines uh, and then uh, we are going to populate this line into the, we are going to convert this line into integer and then save it into the map. So uh, the integer value uh, using string com package ask it to integer function and then uh, we convert the line to string which is a byte slice and we convert it to integer. If uh, there is any error with the conversion we just print uh, whatever we've got and we continue to the next uh, line and then we just uh, do map of number plus plus. So now we did the first iteration, which is linear time. So now the next one is just going through the numbers uh, that we got in the map. And we said that for each number and we call them y, uh, we go through our map, range m. Okay, so when we range the map, we get key and value. So we ignore the value, which is the number of occurrences. In this case, we don't really uh, care for the number of occurrences here. Uh, 
but we also then now we said that we want to calculate 2020 minus y and get x and we want to check if this is this is a candidate this is a candidate for our pair numbers and then we want to check if our x is uh, the right candidate for our pair of numbers if x is in the map um, how do we check if x is in the map we just can use this notation where we can uh, retrieve data from the map and that gives you a two values item so you get the, the value and whether the item is in the map or not so you get x uh, we want to check if x is in the map if uh, is in the map then we know that uh, this is a pair so we already know that y is one of the items x is one of the items we just need to bring it out and find which one is the uh, you know which we need to find find out uh, this the multiplication of those two uh, which we are going to do now x y x y x multiplied by y and then once we find this out uh, we are going to return because we we don't need to check anything else uh, we also need to import all our dependencies which is going to be bytes so you the log and strip com strt conv and then we attempt to run one dot go so we get this uh, parsing error is probably because the input um, is a new line and that's being counted as a um, as a line and so it um, it blows up uh, but we got the our uh, we got the actual output uh, obviously you need to use printf so the print well printf and so you see that uh, 1819 plus 20, uh, 201 is 2020 and then you also have the actual result uh, which is 365,619 which is what we would expect here, 365,619. So this is our first set of the problem. And the first set it uses the same input, but it's just a slightly different problem constraint. And it says, um, uh, so the Ebsen account are thankful for your help. One of them even offers you a surface coin to get left over from a past vacation. They offer you a second one, which you can find, uh, if you can find three numbers in your expense report, and they meet the same criteria. So now it's exactly the same thing, but this time, uh, instead of uh, just two numbers, we're going to find three numbers that adds up to the same uh, to the same uh, to the same criteria. So now, what we want to do um, for each item y in the map, uh, we have a. So the first thing we're going to change in this equation is that we're going to add a third number, which is x plus y plus z. And consequently, what's going to happen is that uh, 2020 minus y uh, is equal to x uh, plus z, so is equal to a certain number s. And then once you have that number s, uh, then you can, uh, so it's equal to x plus z. So x plus z, let's say that this is equal to s for, uh, simplicity, uh, for simplicity. And so... If we have to find out then if uh, if you have to find out then if um, those two numbers are uh, in our set we do the same thing we go through the map again we take s we subtract z uh, and then we take uh, we take uh, x and then we check if x is in the map so here there is another loop so this time we're gonna need to use uh, the uh, n squared uh, not the, the n squared complexity because you're gonna through the, we are going through the map uh, twice so we're gonna uh, through, through the map twice once we get this uh, this sum s so now 2020 minus uh, y we said is going to be equal to s which is uh, represents x plus uh, z then what we're gonna do we're gonna do for each item uh, uh, x we call it x in the map uh, again uh, what we're gonna do we're gonna do z equals uh, s minus x which is uh, our item and then if z is in the map then we do x multiplied by y multiplied by z and this is pretty much the same it's just that there's one more layer where we need to do the um, uh, this abstraction and we need to do the need to find out whether that uh, final number is is in our uh, is in our result is in our list 
So we change the, result, the name here to S. Uh, we go through the, uh, the numbers. So uh, here we used the uh, Y. So now we're going to use uh, uh, X. So for X, uh, range, uh, range M. Uh, what we are gonna do is uh, we said uh, we said this equal we need to test if it said is in our uh, list so uh, the remaining sum minus x and then we just copy paste what we've done before just that now obviously it's editing two times inside the loop so this is z we need to test that z is inside if z is what we need to do with what we expect and we we just uh, debug and we print it out. So we uh, add z here, x, y, z, x, y, z, and then we also multiply x, y, z. I think that's everything we need. Uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, let's see now. I think also yeah, z line 37. I need to declare z, and I think that's everything. And you can see here you have a 236 million, uh, which is uh, 236 million, which is what we were expecting from the problem output here. So this was the first day of Admin of Code. Hope, uh, hopefully you liked it, and uh, see you the next one. Hopefully in the next day. Thanks. Thanks for watching.